You probably know that higher pH is better, but is there a secret they aren't telling you about higher pH? There's tons of data everywhere from forums to YouTube that show how running a higher pH of around 8.3 can lead to faster stony coral growth. Today, we're gonna to be looking at how corals create their skeleton, some interesting new research regarding higher pH, and how you can get better growth out of your corals. But before we get into the fun part, we need to understand how corals actually create their skeleton. Essentially, they combine calcium and carbonate molecules from the water to form their calcium carbonate skeleton. But how does pH affect this growth? Well, combining these calcium and carbonate molecules is easier for the corals at a higher pH. So to help the growth process, corals will actually increase their internal pH by between 0.2 and 0.5 pH points compared to the surrounding water. So already we can see how starting with a higher pH can help boost these calcification rates. Now let's take a look at some interesting research. We're gonna be checking out the article, Effects of Light and Darkness on pH Regulation in Three Coral Species Exposed to Seawater Acidification. The researchers exposed Stylophora, Postulophora, and Acropora to a variety of pHs ranging from 7.2 up to 8.1. They then measured the internal pH, calcification, photosynthesis, and respiration rates for the corals at both day and night. There are four main takeaways from this study, the first being that higher pH is more important for some species than others. The study found that even at a pH of 7.2, daytime calcification rates for Stylophora were relatively consistent, and the lower pH really only decreased nighttime calcification rates. However, in Postulophora and Acropora, there were larger drop-offs. The Acropora exposed to a pH of 7.2 actually dissolved at night, even though it was able to grow throughout the day. Now, the second takeaway is that higher light may help to counteract lower pH. Overall, calcification rates were roughly double during the day, implying that there's a connection between calcification and light. What was most likely happening is the corals are photosynthesizing during the day, which causes their internal pH to increase because they're producing oxygen and removing carbon dioxide. This most likely led to that higher pH, which allowed them to grow easier. At night, they weren't photosynthesizing, so they weren't able to process those carbon dioxide atoms, and thus the pH was lower, so they weren't able to calcify as easily. In theory, this might mean that lower pH can be counteracted with higher and more nutritious white lighting, which could lead to more photosynthesis. While more research is needed, this study definitely shows a correlation and may suggest why older metal halide tanks that often had lower pH than today were still able to get such great growth. The third takeaway is that raising pH doesn't guarantee growth. While calcification rates were much higher at a pH of 8.1 compared to a very low pH of 7.2, Stylophora and Postulophora actually had more calcification on average at a pH of 7.8 than they did at a pH of 8.1. While this seems counterintuitive to most of the results hobbyists have seen, it could be due to the difference in lighting. For this study, the PAR was around 170 micromoles, which is roughly half of what most expose their SPS corals to. I should point out that more research into the effects that lighting and pH have together on growth rates is required to draw more meaningful conclusions, but what is clear is that there's not a direct link between higher pH and higher growth, and there are many factors that affect this connection. But this isn't to say that there are no negatives associated with lower pH. In another recent study, they found that parietes exposed to lower pH develop smaller and more infrequent polyps, even if calcification rates were unaffected. Meaning that while growth may remain the same, corals may not look as healthy and full compared to corals that are grown at a higher pH. The final takeaway is that higher pH is more important at night. As I touched on before, while some daytime calcification rates decreased at lower pH, every species had large drops in their nighttime calcification rates. This is in part because when the corals are photosynthesizing, they're removing CO2 from the surrounding area, as well as from within their own tissues, naturally raising their internal pH. And while nighttime calcification rates are roughly half daytime rates, the nighttime calcification rates for Acropora hyacinthus at a pH of 8.1 was actually higher than the daytime calcification rates when the pH was at 7.2. So while even hardier corals like Stylophora can maintain higher calcification rates during the daytime in lower pH, they have a much harder time at night. So now that we've established a link between higher pH and better growth, how can you raise your pH to encourage your corals to grow faster? And most importantly, at nighttime, when the corals are having a harder time maintaining their own internal pH. Well, first you have to figure what your pH actually is. There are plenty of ways to do this, ranging from simple to a little more complicated. 
The easiest is testing pH with a test kit like API or Red Sea. However, it is important to remember that pH will shift throughout the day and night. So it's good to test at different times throughout the day and record those times to get an idea of where your highs and lows are. But if you don't wanna get the testing kit out multiple times a day, a good investment would be a pH testing pen that allows you to just place the tip into the tank and instantly get a pH reading without having to get out the vials and droppers. A more expensive method that yields much better and more consistent results is a pH probe. There are standalone units you can buy, but the much more effective and affordable option would be the pH probe included with an aquarium controller. And unless you have something like a calcium reactor, most people are gonna get a lot more use out of the controller as a whole than just the pH monitor because there's a wide resource of different uses for the aquarium controller, such as turning on lights, power heads, and a whole host of other applications you can do. Now that we know our pH, it's time to get back out to test kits and check your alkalinity. More testing isn't fun, but it is very important because pH and alkalinity are very closely linked, and when you raise one, typically the other goes up. The good news is that alkalinity is probably the easiest test you can perform and can be as easy as squeezing a few drops into a test tube. However, if you want to get more precise, I highly recommend the HANA alkalinity checker, especially if you test frequently because it's super easy to use and the most accurate tester on the market. Typically, you want to shoot for an alkalinity of around 7 to 12 dKH, but if you're looking to raise your pH, a range of 9 to 12 dKH would be better. It's important to remember that alkalinity swings can crash a tank, so when increasing alkalinity, you should start with a small amount and slowly increase the dosage while testing frequently. Even if you have your alkalinity dialed in, it's still important to test frequently because as your corals grow or you add new corals, your consumption levels can change quite a bit. Now that you have your pH and alkalinity readings dialed in, it's important to identify what kind of tank you have and how low your pH drops. For instance, if you have a softy or LPS dominant tank and your pH typically doesn't drop below 7.8, there isn't going to be a huge benefit from raising your pH. But if you have an SPS dominant system or just a few SPS corals that aren't growing as quickly as you'd like and your pH lingers around 7.8, you're likely going to see an increase in growth if you raise your pH to 8.3 or 8.4. Regardless of your system, the easiest way to increase your pH, particularly at night, is to install a refugium that turns on when your tank lights turn off and turns off when your tank lights turn back on. This removes CO2 from your system at night when your corals aren't photosynthesizing and can help to level out pH swings that are common from day to night. This method needs a substantial amount of space to work, but also has almost no risk to severe parameter swings and is my go-to for any aquarium because it also helps to improve biodiversity. Another method is using a pH supplement. While this seems like an easy fix, like most chemicals, there can be unintended side effects that can occur, such as increasing alkalinity. So it's important to monitor your parameters and slowly dose. If you're still struggling with low pH, the final culprit is likely CO2 in the surrounding air. Whether you've got a full house or don't want to air condition the whole neighborhood, many people deal with elevated CO2 levels in their homes, which will lead to lower pH. If you aren't sure if your CO2 levels are elevated, one great way to find out is to get a small CO2 monitor. You can buy these online for under $40, and they also come with humidity and temperature sensors. While the best way to decrease CO2 levels is to increase airflow from outside, opening a window is usually inconvenient for most of us. Some of the other things you can do to raise your pH and lower CO2 is by running a CO2 scrubber on your skimmer, this reduces the amount of CO2 that comes into your skimmer intake, thus raising the pH. You can also pull in fresh air through your skimmer air intake. However, this does include usually drilling a hole into your wall, which isn't always an option for everybody. Another thing you can try is adding some plants to the room or in very desperate circumstances, you can even install an air exchanger or window AC unit into the room in order to bring in more fresh air. While typically, those extra few millimeters of growth isn't worth adding a whole AC unit. If you do want to chase that, you can go for it. In conclusion, it does appear that higher pH does help increase stony coral growth. However, if you keep mostly soft corals or an LPS, you likely aren't going to see a huge benefit from raising your pH. Additionally, higher pH appears to be more important at night when corals have a harder time raising their internal pH. There are also a ton of options when it comes to raising your pH, but not all of them are equal. 
Some are higher risk than others, and I always recommend starting with the simplest, such as running a refugium. But like everything in this hobby, everyone's tank is different, so let us know down in the comments below your experience with pH and how you've raised it, as well as any questions you guys might have. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.